Over the past 25 plus years, I feel like I've tried every putter on the market, but none of them seem to work right. If I want to shave strokes off my game, I'll need to design my own and get our additive manufacturing team to print it on our desktop metal printer. The problem is I'll probably only get one shot at convincing them. So to engage them with my vision, I'll need to use my secret weapon, SolidWorks Visualize. I really think we can show off desktop metal's capability with this putter I designed. Looks pretty neat. We'll see if we can fit this into our schedule. There's some great features in here that are really hard to machine that could highlight our capabilities. Looks promising. I'm not sure how it's going to turn out. I know it'll fit right, and I can shaft and grip it in my shop at home. I think you're onto something. We'll see if we can get this in the queue. When we get done, it should look something like this. Hey Colin, I've got a project I need to get printed right away here. Can you send me these pictures? Just like I hoped, SolidWorks Visualize helped engage the team to see my vision. And now they want to be a part of the design. Let me back up and show you how I got there. Before I jump into the software, I ask myself, what do I want to accomplish with my render? How long do I have to get the project done? And how critical is the perfection of my final imagery? With that in mind, I try and lay out a few basic shots on paper, giving me some rough ideas of product orientations and camera angles I want to try. The key here is not being overburdened with details, but focusing more on nomenclature for my images so I can track iteration changes. Last step before diving into Visualize is grouping like parts or specific faces with random colors that I want all to be a certain texture or appearance. If there's a specific feature that I think sales or marketing might want me to change, rather than model the texture, I'll just split that face out by itself. Hey Brandon, what are you up to? Shooting a video on how I rendered my putter with SolidWorks Visualize. <laughs> well, good timing then, because that's why I called. I showed those images of your putter to marketing, and they wanted to know if you could do some more with copper, bronze, and aluminum. Apparently, those materials are in development, and they want to gauge customer interest. Marketing? I thought they only dealt with finished products. Yeah, they used to, but we need to get customer feedback to help guide development. Can I just send them the file and they can work with it? Every seat of SolidWorks Professional and Premium on subscription gets a free seat of SolidWorks Visualize Standard. They can install it on their own machine. Uh, yeah, I think that should work. If you've gone to a photo studio for family portraits, you've probably noticed they already have some lighting and background set up, right? Well, that's exactly what the HDR environments in SolidWorks Visualize are for. But for the classy look I'm after, a simple studio scene will do the job to start. Now I can move products around and work on camera orientations. In addition to having a free working camera, I think it's important to lock down cameras from my roadmap early on. I like to compare multiple appearances, lighting changes, and textures all from the same camera angles. Everyone has their own style for iterating changes and rendering. I like to leverage SolidWorks Visualize Professional's ability to batch render all cameras and use configurations to track major material changes. Plus, I can set up a whole list of jobs to do one right after another with the render queue. The key here is to get a process down that you're comfortable with and a good documentation strategy you can use to note differences from one completed render to the next. I want to change lighting and appearances several times, and I want to be sure I'm efficient. Hey Brandon, it's Tony. Quick question for you. How many of those putters do you still have left in your office? Uh, none. All I've done is render it. But man, those images are getting around fast. First marketing, now sales. Go ahead and put me down for an order for four or five of them. I already have a few customers that want one. With my processes set, I'm ready to add some appearances. SolidWorks Visualize has an amazing local library of stock materials and cloud resources as well. I'll start with a low number of passes and work my way up. After rendering these sets of images, I can compare them to see where my diminishing return level is. Visualize's hybrid CPU GPU rendering is super fast. But now that I'm answering all these calls from the team, I don't want to waste my valuable time over rendering an image for nearly the same quality. Now I'm ready to make changes to appearances, textures, and environments. The more critical the job, the more attention I'll spend trying different options. 
SolidWorks Visualize even gives me the ability to create and save my own custom textures and appearances. Sometimes I need to make decisions on the fly, which is where so the SolidWorks Visualize Denoiser changes the game. Renders that took minutes before now happens in seconds. Now I don't need to worry about batch rendering every little change. With everybody on board, the putter's done and my scores are sure to go down. And it's all thanks to... Ah, oh, sweet. It's done. This looks nice. I wasn't sure when I first saw the print, but I sent those pictures to everybody and they really liked them. One thing, we'd like to do one design change back here. Can you do that? Probably can. May need to use SolidWorks PDM to keep track of the design changes, but it's worth trying out. You want to increase engagement with your customers or even inside your own organization? Then give CATI a call at the number listed below and ask to talk with one of our SolidWorks Visualize Solution Specialists today.